y'all, Casey here with the Efficient Classroom. And today we're talking about one of my favorite efficiency tips, choice, um, and the positive impact it can have on your classroom and your classroom culture. And so yeah, let's jump right in. First of all, let's go ahead and talk about some of the main impacts for classroom um, learner engagement is First of all, relationships. We just need to talk about that one before you think I'm only focusing on choice here. Choice is a part, like a facet of relationships, but you must form um, strong, positive relationships with your kids. Um, however that looks for you, it is crucial to um, just a good functioning classroom and academic success. So within that, we've also got um, high expectations comes next. Like when you think about the hierarchy relationships are up here and then underneath that you've got high expectations and you can have high expectations for kids and a rigorous classroom once you have that foundation of the class the relationships but then under that you've got one of my favorite things choice and giving students choice helps you to improve the rigor while lowering the stress of um, the content i'm a math teacher and so students feel very stressed in general um, about learning math it is a high anxiety environment for so many students and a lot of that is just parents perception that they and they just have never overcome that growth mindset of like yes they're able to do that but lowering the fear in a math classroom is really important for their success and choice is a way to do that because it gives them ownership of um well their choices and they're not just constantly being told this is what you do and this is how you do it and so choice is a very important part of my math classroom in addition or you might also be wondering like what do you mean by choice when i first heard choice and choice boards even per in, in, in particular i thought um of like a project and like you got to choose how you presented the content that you were doing a project on. Um, and, and when I was in school, I remember specific choice boards being like, um, you can write a poem about your learning or um, perform a rap or make a poster board or, um, write a paper was always an option. Um, that has, that concept of students choosing has evolved into um, just a lot more variety in ways that we can offer choice for students. It can be something small as um, letting them choose which writing utensil they prefer. It's a hard one for me because as a math teacher, I prefer that they use a pencil. Um, but is that something I could give up to allow them to have choice? Yes, absolutely. Um, letting them choose their seat, depending on your classroom management style. This one may or may not work for you. Um, but if, even if it doesn't work for you every day, it could work for you some days. Um, and it gives the students a voice and a chance to be heard and an opportunity to, um, have a say in what's going on in their world. It could be that you are doing stations um, or like a station rotation activity and you have like six stations and they get to choose three or choose four. And so they get to kind of analyze and think about what is going to be the best for them, where they're going to learn the most, what's going to provide them the least stress, um, least stress, and then they can choose which station they go to. 
Um, it could be something as easy as, uh, you know, I'm going to go through some practice problems with you guys. Um, do we, let's vote. Do we want to do the evens or the odds together? Um, just so that you're not always dictating what's happening in the class. And sometimes it's manufactured and they think that they're getting a choice, even whenever it's something that you are going to do anyway. So um, I think that the opportunity to look for ways to give students choice, um, they're there um, if we just look for them and do them. So teacher benefits um, for offering student choice, just so many, um, getting students um, on board with your classroom goals. Um, the next option that I want to talk to you about choice is choice boards. And I have a few examples of ones that I've made and um, I'll just show them to you and let you like think about how I would do this. Um, so one is a math board and actually let me pull out the bingo board with it because it's kind of the same idea. Of course, it's on the bottom. Um, so the math board is similar to a bingo board where they would choose um, instead of, you know, like bingo is going to have five across and math is going to have four across and the students go uh, four, get, try to get four in a row, whether they are horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. Same thing with the bingo board, getting five in a row um, vertically, horizontally, or along the diagonal. And when I make these, I'm pretty strategic about the types of problems that I put, um, you know, in, in all of the options. I can make like... Um, them have four different types of problems and I can strategically make sure that each row and each column has one of the four types of problems. So even though they feel like they are choosing, um, they are still getting all of the practice that I really need them to get. Additionally, um, another benefit is they are really thinking about their thinking. Um, when they see these questions on here, they're like, oh, I'm really good at like maybe this type of problem. Let's see if I should do like this row or like this column. And then they're looking at multiple problems and analyzing which ones they're going to they're going to perform the best on. And um, the other benefit about these is they often do more than what the minimum requirement is. And because they're like, oh, my, maybe I want to do this row. And um, they'll start to work it and then they'll be like, oh, yeah, I did that one instead. Um, or they'll start a row and then be like, oh, I don't really feel confident with this problem. I'm going to do another column over here um, because I feel more confident with these problems. So the um, students actually usually end up doing more than the minimum requirement. Um, another fun one is a tic-tac-toe board. Um, similar idea, they're looking for a tic-tac-toe, so they would get um, three in a row, whether um, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. And, um, and actually on this one, I told them that they needed to start with the middle box, and then they could get um, the tic-tac-toe. So they had to do the middle box, because I really, really wanted them to get this particular practice example in. And then from there, they had choice of whether they went, um, you know, here, 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 or here. Um, but they, I know for sure they really all needed this one. So there's another example of tic-tac-toe. Um, this one is really fun. And I feel like as I've made these, um, you can be really strategic about the types of problems and you can kind of um, navigate the choices in such a way that they're really doing the practice that you need them to do. It's called Add It Up and um, there's a section up here 
and a bottom section on this particular one, it's two points for these and four points for these, but um, I've done other ones where the points are a little bit different depending on the types of problems and how much I would needed them to add up or, you know, if they were very short or very long, you know, there's just a lot of variety that teachers have choice too on how they make this. Um, so for this one, I told them that they needed to earn 12 points. So they could do all four of these, which are simpler and involve, less involved, require fewer steps. And then one of these that are a little um, longer, take a little more thought and have more steps. Um, or they could just do three of these and then that's, you know, three problems and they're done. But they've done three challenging problems that require multiple steps. And so I feel like they have done adequate practice. So this one's a really cool option for um, giving students choice. This is a this or that board, um, and the you just create ten, you know, five problems, and then create five that are very similar in nature, but um, give them some choice on which ones they do, depending on if they find the numbers more friendly or um, let's see, this one, you know. They're graphing. This one is two different word problems, so like whichever one they feel more comfortable with. But basically, they're just assessing the same skills, having them practice the same things in each column, and they, but they get to choose. Um, so these are examples that, and I learned these. Uh, I learned about these choice board templates from my friend Elena. She's with the, uh, she's the classy teacher and um, she makes these templates that you can buy and I will link her uh, resource down below. And um, from there, I've made some other templates of my own and, um, but I will for sure send you to her store. I have also made um, geometry choice boards for the whole year. I'll link that below too. So if you are a geometry teacher and you don't want to go through and make these, but you are really excited about this being the practice that your students do as opposed to just a worksheet where there's no choice involved, I'll link those down there too. Um, but choice boards just in general, they're fun. The kids like them. Um, it's a little bit more of a personalized learning experience. Um, they have a little bit more uh, buy-in and they're more willing to persevere. And if they have one problem that they just can't figure out, they will almost always choose to do another one to see if they can get a different problem. So um, win, 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 win. <laughs> like there's so many great things about these. Um, so yeah. If you are interested in hearing more efficiency tips, check out my other videos, like and subscribe below. And um, thanks for joining me today. Have a great day.